Hey there, it's Adam with yet another What's New in Mix Effect. Today we're going to take a look at Mix Effect 1.4, the animation and automations release. Let's get started. And before we do, I want you to be eagle eyed and see if you can see some of the changes in Mix Effect before I start talking about them. All right. So let's go to the presentation here. We're going to talk about documentation. Super source, animations, automations, OSC, shortcuts, a grab bag of other changes, and some bug fixes. First up is the new documentation website, which is at docs.mixeffect.app. I've refreshed the navigation, the layout, and the UI, and it's much better than it was before. Old URLs will redirect to the new ones. Uh, and I encourage you to take a look at this new documentation website. If you haven't done so already, there's chock full of information on how to get the most out of Mixeffect. Pay special attention if you use shortcuts and OSC. Those sections are much better laid out. It's much easier to find the action that you need to accomplish your little automation task on your Stream Deck or in shortcuts. So check that out. Supersource, let's get started and show you what changes have been made. Go to the iPad. All right. Over here in the Supersource Options button, I've flattened out the navigational structure. So all the commands are basically one level or two levels deep. So you can set the style and the speed right from here. You don't have to go dig down through animation or transition if you want to get to cut and auto. It's right there for you. I've added three new animation styles. Ease in out elastic, ease out bounce, and ease out elastic. You may have seen ease out bounce when I transitioned to this Supersource layout. But let's take a look at some of the other ones. So here we have my camera on the left. We have a HyperDeck that's looping on the right. We have the iPad and an iPod Touch. And I'm going to go switch to this one, which is the standard fast uh, animation. Now I'm going to do this one. This one. one. Go back to the top one. Bounce them down and bring it back like this. And go back to the iPad. Pretty cool, huh? I think you're going to really like using these animations with your presets. What's cool is that you can now bind a custom animation style to a preset. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to edit this preset here. And I'm going to scroll down. And you can see I have a new section called Use Custom Animation. I can turn it on or off. And I can set which animation style I want to use with that preset. With the custom speed, I can also, uh, I won't actually pay attention uh, that if you use the ease out styles, you want to use a slower animation speed. The reason is because the animation speed basically calculates the number of frames to use. So the slower it is, the more frames it will use to do the animation. With ease out bounce, ease out elastic. Uh, and ease in out elastic, there's a lot of frames as the boxes are moving back and forth. So you want to use a slower animation speed. and It'll make it look much better. So I tend to use the fast animations for my default transitions. But if I'm using one of these easing presets, animation presets, I want to use slow or normal. Lastly, if you have used the aspect ratio kind of menu here, um, if your video source was not cropped, your box source was not cropped, it would do nothing. But now it will automatically crop it. So if I want to crop that 5D Mark IV image right there, I can do that. Press the command to bring that guy back. All right. So that is the changes made to SuperSource. Now, you saw the animation styles I've added to SuperSource boxes so you can make them bounce up and down. I've also added these to color generators, audio, the downstream keyer, and the upstream keyer. You can now animate all those things. And you can also automate those things plus transitions. We'll get to that in a second. So let's take a look at audio real quick. Uh, now you can create uh, shortcut actions or OSC actions that fade or raise the uh, gain of your audio inputs over time. So if we go to the iPad. Take a look at the audio section here. I have some buttons that I've assigned on the Stream Deck to fade my input gain down to minus 60 dB, and then I'm going to raise it back up to zero. So watch carefully.
So just like that, you can create shortcut actions or OSC buttons on your Stream Deck to fade or raise the, the input volume of your audio sources. And you can do it over a duration of either zero, instant, or 10 seconds. So check that out. It's really cool. I know that's a long requested feature. Now, you may have noticed something happening with the background in my super source. It's changing colors. What's happening? Am I using like another device that's plugged into an input into the ATEM? No, I'm actually using the color generators. So if you watch carefully, the values are changing every three seconds and the background in my super source is changing accordingly. So how is this, how is this working? We go back to super source and I'm going to change uh, the iPad input to my iPod touch. I'm actually running a shortcut as calculating random numbers for the hue, saturation, and luminance, and sending an OSC message to my iPad mix effect to change the color generator colors. And it's going to wait three seconds. It's going to repeat the whole thing all over again. So we go back to color generators here, which is back to the iPad. Go back to color generators. We see again, every three seconds, the iPod touch is sending a message to mix effect to say, change the new saturation and luminance values for color one, which is being used as the super source background art. So you don't need to use up another input uh, with a background image if you're happy with kind of like a solid color that's changing over time. And I'm using very subtle changes, but you can make very uh, wide, large changes and then you have a very psychedelic uh, animated background with the color generators. All right. So let's take a look at the upstream keyers. So I'm going to go back to super source. I'm going to bring in, let's say, bring in my Mac. OK, so in the upper right is actually an upstream keyer of me. It's not in super source right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some buttons that I've created on the stream deck that basically give me upstream keyer presets for the DBE. So let's say I wanted to go to 100% with a bounce animation. I want to bring it in a little closer, maybe a little closer. That might be a little too close, so let's actually bring that back a bit. And let's say I like myself down in the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, that made me disappear. There is in the bottom left-hand corner. So bring me back up like this. I can make it go full screen, close up, or back there. Now, if we take a look at the upstream keyer section in Mix Effect. Let's say I wanted to create an automation that pushed me down to the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to just move my guy right there. And in each section, super source, color generators, transitions, downstream keyers, and upstream keyers, there's a new section called automations at the very bottom. If you tap that, you'll see the screen appear, and you can add to Siri a bunch of shortcuts, some that use a shortcut action, and some that use the send OSC message action. And below that are actually parameters for companion. You can see the IP address of the MixEffect application, of the device that's running MixEffect. You can see the OSC ports that I've configured. You see the path that you need to enter in the companion, and you see the full argument list. So in this case here, I have um, two actions, the MixEffect USK DB full, which sets all the parameters of the DB, including what the source is. And I also have the USK DB size position rotation, which sets the size position rotation or the DBE. And down here, I also have the custom animation speed that I've set for one second and using the ease out bounce. So I can bake these into companion. I can just copy and paste using these buttons and insert them into companion. And then I have a new preset that I can assign. So let's make this guy go back up to the top. I can just push this button and it goes like that. This animation actually happened over two seconds because I had made that button before. And I didn't copy the one that you saw, which had an animation of, sec of one second. So again, do that. And I create my new preset and it does that. So all you need to do to create one of these things is just to go to Automation tab. If you want to use the one that's using Siri, you can tap that. Looks like I have a shortcut with that same name. I'm going to rename this one to say bottom right corner. 
and you say edit and shortcuts. And there's the shortcut. I'm actually going to bring in mix effect. Bye. So here's the bottom right corner shortcut. So we're going to go back up here so you can see the animation happen. And in the shortcut here, I'm just going to tap run. And you see it runs the shortcut just like that. If you wanted to copy and paste them into Companion again, you would just go down here. You'd say, OK, copy that, paste that into Companion, copy that, paste that into Companion, and then you have a Companion button uh, ready to go. So it's a really convenient way to create these kind of animated presets for your upstream keyer, your downstream keyer, super source boxes. Transitions don't do animation, but you can actually have a button that sets all your uh, transition parameters right then and there color generators, and audio. So we go back to presentation. There we go. Move me back up to the top here. Uh, we have the downstream here. You can animate the mask and the clip and the gain. And so this is actually kind of neat when you, if you have like another image and you want to kind of bring that image in using the downstream here, but you won't take over the entire screen. You just kind of want it to appear. Uh, and you can use that by making the mask kind of come in and out. So an example of that is over here. So let's actually go to change my switcher to this one, make the upstream keyer disappear. And I'm going to make the downstream keyer appear. So if we go to the downstream keyer section here, number two, we'll make this one go up here. And we have right now the mask is actually, or the, the image for the downstream keyer is actually the keynote presentation that I have. And I'm just making the mask make it disappear and reappear. And you can see it changing in mix effect. If I actually bring that up, and you'll see the downstream here changing the mask. Okay. So if I wanted to set that as an automation, I would just go to automations. Here's all the parameters I need to input into companion or add to a shortcut in Siri. If I make it disappear, Make it disappear, and there's the parameters that I need to send to Companion or just push these buttons to add to Siri shortcut. All right, so that's how that works. Again, automations are available in transitions, upstream keyers, downstream keyers, super source, and color generators. So I encourage you to take a look at all those sections to see what kinds of automations you can add. One button push on a stream deck or invoke it using a shortcut. So changes that have been made to OSC, including adding some new actions to support configuring all the parameters of the USK. Uh, there's a capture still action, as well as uh, actions to change super source box positions with duration and animation. I've also updated all of these actions to support duration and automations. Uh, so I would encourage you to take a look at the docs.mixeffect.app section, the OSC messages, to see what new parameters are there. They're all optional. Um, you can just add the duration or the animation style at the end to many of these functions, and it will just work. With shortcuts, I've added a couple of new shortcuts, a capture still shortcut that and get color generators, which I'm using for the animated backgrounds that you were seeing earlier today, and the ability to set the Fairlight audio master and source volumes uh, with a duration. And another action, which is actually pretty cool, is the get time code. So with that, you can actually get the current time code from the ATEM switcher, and then you can take that information and do what you will with it. You can add it to a note. You can email yourself. You can add it to a Google Sheet or a spreadsheet. You can keep track of like key and moments that are happening on your um, ATEM. So, and then updated shortcut actions include uh, the ability to add the duration and animation parameters to the USK and the super source box details. So moving right along, we have a grab bag of other changes. So you can set your default animation, time, and style in preferences. So if we go here, Back to mix effect, the gear under automations, you can see use custom animations toggled on with a one second 
configuration and a style of an ease out balance. So basically any automation that I create will have that parameter baked in. And I can always override them for individual basis, or I can change this one to change the defaults to what I want. I also have the ability to do unlimited auto reconnect attempts. Now, normally MixEffect will stop trying to connect your ATEM switcher after three failed attempts. But if you're using MixEffect in kind of like a kiosk or guided access mode and you want it to always connect, try to connect to the ATEM, turn this feature on and MixEffect will try to connect to the ATEM, whether it's on or not on. The time code view now has a wheel picker. So if you go to the output, and you want to change your time code, you can do this, and you'll see a nice wheel picker. This used to be an iOS 14 version of MixEffect. iOS 15 changed some things, and I brought it back. Let's see. There's also an improved initial connection, so you may experience faster connection times when you're starting up MixEffect for the very first time. And there's a refresh connection screen, so you can actually see what switcher you're trying to connect to in big letters. Finally, we get to some bug fixes. So let's take a look at that page here. There's some fixes that were made to the shortcut actions introduced in the MixEffect 1.3 release for equalizer bands. So now setting the band correct, well, modify the correct band. Um, as, you, as I mentioned before, the time code view shows a wheel picker again. There's some changes to the USK here pattern, the rotation scale on supported switchers. And if you're using shortcuts on an iOS device, it will work much better because it will detect whether the switcher is active. And then if it's not active, it will just stop running the shortcut and say, you know, there's a problem. You need to connect to the shortcut, to, to the MixEffect. There's a shortcut in the docs, the MixEffect helper or the MixEffect switcher active shortcut that I highly recommend you put at the top of all your shortcuts that are interacting with MixEffect. What that basically does is it opens up MixEffect checks to see if the switcher is currently active. If it's not, it will raise up an alert saying, you know, please wait until the switcher is connected before continuing running the shortcut. Now, this is not a problem really on the iPad because you can run shortcuts in split view or in slide over. But on iOS, you only have one app open at a time. So if you're running a shortcut, you want to open up MixEffect, but then iOS may have suspended MixEffect because it's very aggressive in backgrounding applications and then you want to wait. So that's what the switcher active or the MixEffect helper uh, shortcuts do. So take a look at the shortcuts section. And I explain how those shortcuts work and how you can use them in your um, shortcuts that you make. All right. So those are all the changes that are in MixEffect 1.4, the animations and automations release. I think this is a really powerful update for A10 Mini, Mini Pro, and Mini Pro ISO users. Because up until now, they haven't been able to animate the DVE beyond using the flying key, which is kind of a complicated system. But now with a stream deck or shortcuts, you can now create presets for your DVE and basically do some of the things that A10 Mini Extreme and Mini Extreme ISO users have been enjoying for almost the past year. So if you have an A10 Mini, Mini Pro, Mini Pro ISO, I hope you enjoy this update. For those with the A10 Mini Extreme and Mini Extreme ISO or other switchers that support SuperSource, I think you're gonna love the new animation styles to have your boxes bounce all around. Uh, for people who wanna control your audio, now you can have your audio fade uh, over time, which is really cool. And uh, there's a whole lot of other features. Check it out, the release notes. And if you like this video and you like MixEffect, please leave a comment down below. Also leave a review on the App Store. I really like five-star reviews. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please do so by clicking that subscribe button. Again, hope you've enjoyed using MixEffect and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.